Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another scripting tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about in pairs loops. So what in pair loops basically do is they can loop through uh, folders and ta uh, basically folders, tables, anything you want to loop through, basically models, parts. Um, so I guess I could show you. So to make a for i for, for uh, in pairs loop, you want to type for iv in pairs pretty simple and then you basically just want to type um the path to what you want to loop through so i'm gonna loop through the players so we're gonna type game dot players get children now we always have to type get children at the end unless it's a table so meaning if it's local table um here local table is equal to my table one my table if, if it's basically a table, um, you wouldn't want get children. But if you if it's, for example, something in the Explorer, you do want get children. So then uh, once you do this, you could do uh, space do and then enter. We should get an end. So let me explain what we have over here. So right from here, from line one to line three, it's going to loop um, and it's going to go through players. So if I add a part into players, I can name this uh, player one, and then player two, player three. Uh, actually, that's player two. I don't know why I typed player. Okay, sorry. <laughs> player two, three, four, and let's do five. So if we type print, so let me explain what I and V are. So you could type whatever you want here. You could type uh, hello and bye, but they have to be in uh, this order. So they have to be one letter. So one let. Uh, one letter or one word, uh, one word, and then uh, one letter or however you want it. But basically, the first, the first letter or word you type here, the I, so for I V, it's going to be the number. So it's going to be the number of the loop. So if we print uh, number, it's going to print basically one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to print. Uh, Basically, let me just show you. It'll print here. Uh, print uh, one, then it'll print two, three, and then all the way up to six. And then what V is? V is the actual. I guess you could say it's the actual item that it's looping through. So if I do uh, print item dot name, or if I just do print item, it will print player one, player two, player three, player four, player five, and then access queue. Or access queue will probably be first, but that's how it will work. So let me uh, make this back to IV. Um, and I'm going to type right here. I'm going to do uh, print um, V dot dot is the, um, I can't type, but is the, uh, I guess we want to do instance. So it's the instance. And then we want to print uh, I dot dot is the number. Well, actually, before we press play, um, I have an error in here that I caught before I press play. But we want to type v.name because v is the actual model. It's the actual part or the actual instance, I guess. Um, so we want to type v.name. And then, um, yeah, l let's see. So I'm actually going to also change it to a warn so we could say, see them uh, separately. So I'm going to press play right now. And you'll see right there, it all loaded. So you can see player one is an instance. One is a number. Player 2 is the instance, 2 is a number, and then it just continues going on. And if you see over here, with the uh, number, it you'll see how it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so that's basically going to be the number of the loop. So you can see right here, this is the fifth item in here. You see 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. That's why it says 5 is the number under the part 5 or player 5. So let's say I change player 2 to player 5 and player 5 to player 2. Um, it should still print 5. Yeah, here. It should print that number 2 is number 5 actually because in the list it's actually number 5. Okay, that's it's a bit confusing, but that's what it is. So, I'm going to show you a few really helpful examples um, of how you can use a for i loop. So, I'm going to make a screen GUI and uh, we'll do a frame uh let's just do for example we'll do a yeah we'll do a frame with buttons so i'll uh just make this real quick so i'll 
make the frame basic this is basically going to be a list of a bunch of buttons so we could have uh a shop button let's do a credits button and let's do a uh system but uh settings button settings button so so right over here you see we have shop credits and settings so each one of these is named basically how it's supposed to be so we have settings shop and credits and let's say we wanted these to open up frames so i'll make two uh frames or actually i'll do two text labels um i'll size them uh fully like the size of the screen so we'll do one zero one zero and i just realized it's not in the screen gui um so this is going to be let's let's make this one the shop so this is going to be shop so we're going to name this shop frame and then we're going to name this other one uh credits frame credits frame so we'll credits and then the last one we'll do settings frame or settings frame um so now if i write a script in here really quickly we can write local buttons is equal to for uh, script dot parent dot frame because this is where we're storing all of the buttons and then what we want to do is basically we'll write a for i loop to loop through the frame so we'll do for iv in pairs buttons get children get children do so now we have a loop basically going through whoops so now we have a loop going through uh, all the children or actually I didn't make these invisible whoops I mean these ones let me make them invisible so we have a loop going through all the buttons and now we want to type if v is a text button uh, then so what we're doing over here is we're detecting if v basically if settings shop credits or UI list layout if it's a text button which this UI list layout isn't and these three are um, this will do v dot mouse button one click connect function. So this way we detect it when you click on it. Now, if we didn't check if it is a text button, then it will error because we have a UI list layout inside of here. And UI list layout, you can't click on it. So like it, it would say uh, uh, mouse button one click is not a valid member of UI list layout. So now we want to make a function. Now I'll basically explain to you what functions are and how to use them in a future video. But for now, I'm just going to make one so i'm going to do local function clear ui and inside of here we're going to do script.parent.credits frame uh dot visible is equal to false script.parent dot uh shop frame dot visible actually let me make a, a another ui uh thing another for i loop so we'll do for iv in pairs uh script.parent get children do because we want to loop basically through all of these now we also want to have visible or any well we'll do the um the chosen frame inside of here so we'll do if v is a um image label which basically all three of these are image labels these two aren't so we'll check if it's an image label then uh we want to do one more if statement so if v dot uh name is not equal to chosen dot name then v dot visible is equal to false else we could do v dot visible is equal to true so let me explain this so from here uh, from this line to this line, we're looping through all, all of these. Every single highlighted item is getting looped through. So we want to check basically if the item that is getting looped through is a text label. So all three of these, you could see they are text labels. This is a frame and this is a local script. So if they are a uh, text label, then if their name, basically credits frame, settings frame, shop frame, if it's not equal to the chosen, uh, which basically will uh, will tell the function what chosen is. So the chosen basically will get changed to, for example, shop frame. So shop frame. So if it's not shop frame, uh, it'll make it invisible. And if it is shop frame, it will make it visible. Now I'll explain to you um, basically how I could how it will kind of work. So or I'll show you how it's gonna work. So yeah, over here, if it's if it is um, if it's not, sorry, if it's not the same name as the chosen one, or actually, I don't know why I said chosen that name. I just want to do chosen. So if it's not the same as chosen, then it'll be invisible. If it is the same, it will be visible. So right here, we want to 
run the function. So we'll do clear UI and we want to do v dot name dot dot frame. So as you see over here, we have settings, shop and credits. And then over here we have credits frame, shop frame, and then settings frame. So we are sending, uh, we're changing the chosen text to the, the, but the, basically the button's name, which is either settings, shop or credits. Uh, and then we're going to do dot dot frame. So it'll be basically one of these. So credits frame, shop settings frame, or shop frame, depending on what we click. And that will loop through basically all the frames. So let's test it out. So I just pressed plan. It didn't work. And I just realized over here, I typed image label. It needs to be text label because these are text label, text labels, not image labels. So now we could test it out and it should work. So the game loaded up. Now, if I click on shop, shop should be visible. There we go. Now credits and settings. So I could uh, choose any of them in whatever order I want. I could do shop settings, uh, shop credits or settings shop. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what order I could just click any of them and it makes the responding frame visible. Now, of course, these are text labels. I would usually change this out to frame. And then, uh, now usually if I were to script this, I would make these frames and then I would also make this frame. But since we also have this frame, I would name this buttons and I would also basically do and V dot name is not equal to buttons. So this way it's all the frames except for the one with the buttons. So the, um, so the, basically the, uh, buttons can be visible all the time. So I hope that was able to show you how useful, um, these loops are in pair loops. I would really recommend using them not only for screen GUIs, but also let's say you want to check how many, uh, all the players in the game, you could do four IV in pairs, game dot players, get children, do, um, and basically it will print, uh, for example, the dot name, it'll print all the players names. So let's say you want to check if a certain player is in the game, you could do this and then you could do if V dot name is equal, for example, to access Q, um, then you could, uh, I don't know, give him admin or something, then, then, uh, print, uh, the owner is in the game. So you could, you could use it for something like that, uh, or whatever you want. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure to like, and also make sure to subscribe because I'll be posting more tutorials, more scripting tutorials, and just more Roblox studio tutorials. So I would say it's worth subscribing so you can learn how to script better. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you do subscribe, make sure to turn the notifications on so you get notified when I upload my next scripting tutorial. Anyways, thank you for watching and see ya.